Hey, before we get into the Buffalo Bills hate fest, let's talk a little bit of baseball. Uh, the Red Wings are coming off a very odd season. The best pitching in the league, worse hitting. They were better on the road than they were at home. It, it left you as a marketing arm of this ball club a difficult sell, I think. No, because we still had fireworks on Friday and Saturday <laughs> and lots of giveaways and, uh, you know, the food's good and all that stuff. But, yeah, it was a weird year, and uh, the pitching was terrific. First time the Wings have led the league in ERA since 1976. But the offense was historically bad. Uh, the first time I think the Red Wings have ever finished last in the league in runs per game since maybe World War II. So it was a historically bad offensive team. Kind of tough to figure, too, because when I was at spring training in Fort Myers, uh, I think I had more people from the Twins genuinely think this was going to be a playoff caliber team than ever before, and it just didn't turn out that way. You know, we, we always say that the success of the Red Wings hinges less on the success of the ball club than, you know, a lot of the other right. things. That are, but, but as a guy who's the baseball arm of this thing, describing games every night and stuff, do you think that's true? Uh, the success of the franchise overall, yeah, probably. Uh, it, it's fun to watch the team win. Unfortunately, there's nothing that we can do about that in our front office at One Maury Silver Way. So you just kind of have to roll with the punches a little bit in that regard. And, and this was one of those seasons where things just didn't uh, necessarily turn out the way everybody would have hoped in terms of wins and losses. I just want one more thing in that regard. Uh, does it offend you as the baseball guy, the play-by-play -play guy, that the baseball itself isn't more up important? No, because I understand what it's all about at this level. So uh, I just kind of roll with the punches in that regard. I mean, it's better, more, a little bit more fun, I guess, if the team is more successful on the field. But there's, again, nothing I can do about it. So <laughs> I'm just uh, there to describe what happens on the field and then kind of take it from there. Two more years of the Twins, you know, right? Two more years was yes, the yeah. thing. And, and I'm, I watch, you know, Toby Matika works with me. He's a big Twins fan. So we see a lot of Twins games and all. And we also see the rest of the league. And we see a lot of former Twins and guys who either came through here late or they brought them in too early or they skipped AAA and whatever. That's not what we were expecting when the Twins came in as the franchise, were we? We were expecting, I think, a little more stability coming off way back, coming off the Orioles. And I don't know if you how critical you're going to be of the Twins in that sense, but I don't think they've handled their prospects all particularly well. Well, I think the Byron Buxton thing, uh, you know, obviously, they, I think if they look back on it now, they probably rushed into the big leagues and... That hasn't turned out, but I think it's important to remember, too, in 2016 and 2017, the Red Wings won 80 games each of those years. In any other season in minor league yeah. baseball, 80 wins, you're in the playoffs. In those two years, the Red Wings had terrible luck. There happened to be two teams in their division that were better, oddly enough, and they didn't make the playoffs. So if they'd had a little bit better luck... We'd be sitting here right now with the Wings not having made the playoffs for the first time in three and years. And I think the Wings have put a pretty good product on the field in that sense in doing that. I'm saying is, God, I think we were expecting it to transition to the major leagues maybe a little better than it has. But you also have a unique situation where the Twins are right on the cusp of that playoff berth for the last couple of years, right? So there's young guys that can contribute to major league teams but may have been held back by teams that were either too far out of it or ready to make a legitimate late playoff run get rushed up to Minnesota, which, again, is going to cost you when it comes to your minor league team. But... You know, they get really good food. Yeah, <laughs> they're really, really good, good food. food. You know, and I always see those Governor's Cup championship pennants that are out, out in the uh, outfield. Now, I combine this with the Rochester Americans. Th these are historic droughts in terms of championships with both teams. And we look back on this, this is like the dead zone for Rochester sports. Uh, and the thing when is, we look in comparison back, to Buffalo, to a certain degree, and Syracuse, the Red Wings are doing great on yeah. the field. Because, yeah. I mean, Syracuse hasn't yeah. won a Governor's Cup since the mid-'70s. Buffalo's won one more recently, but Buffalo has the longest playoff drought of any team in the International League. So in comparison to the other two teams along the throughway, the Red Wings are actually doing really well. well. Used to, and they used to toss parent clubs out for not winning the championship. Every year they were getting teams yeah. out of there.